What's up guys, this is Shana and today we are going to check out 10 stoner in KL? <laughs> yeah! We are back in True Blue KL City Centre again this round and this is a very familiar location because we have checked out not one but two adjacent projects to 10 stoner We have checked out stoner 3 before we have checked out Aria before and why I want to check this out because I want to illustrate whenever you buy a high rise property in KL be very mindful of the surrounding because the distance between buildings can get really really close and that's the zoning patterns what's very weird right we are now right opposite Jalan Tun Raza which is one of the main street that connects KLCC to TRX and the rest of KL on one end you have very low density the golf course in the center of the city itself but then on one side you have ultra dense high rise all the way you have offices, residents and all Ten Stoner is actually located right at the fringe of this so you have glimpse of the golf course then right in front this is Eaton House School so it's an international school and this is one junction away from Jalan Tun Raza so because of its setting as well, you don't really have the luxury of space to have a very big entrance. So there's one very kitschy entrance into the project. Lah. Look into the facade design, it's really nice. I guess this will be the elevated car park because the plinth is so small. High rises around but on one side you have open air so that's great. Concern first of all, you have an empty land here which most likely is going to be another apartment. And coming into the entrance, right, this very narrow road connects three buildings. One will be Stoner Tree, another this will be the back door to Ira, and that will be the main junction into Ten Stoner. And if you can see, we've been standing there for a while, everybody that comes in and out, right? All of them are tourists or expats. No Malaysians, not really no Malaysians. <laughs> Coming in from the main entrance, that will be the drop off where you have a very fancy lobby, then you have the water features and the green wall. This will be the elevator car park, this will be the basement car park. And you look into the neighbor, <laughs> what a luxury. And this, you have a small little pocket here. And the beauty of this side again, you have foliage like this within the center of the city. You have a back way there and there's something exciting here. You have a bicycle car park space. Very cool. First time. Never seen before. Anyway, we are now at the elevated car park and it's very bright because the project is actually very short, right? So you kind of have openings pretty close to each other. You won't have any dark zones. But when you have a very small plot of land, the only way to maximize car park will be the arrangement of a split level like this. So this, I call it a scissors ramp where you go in and up half a floor each time. So if you park at level 6, sometimes you need means you need to go through 12 times the ramp and just now we check there's three basement to this project and that's going to be very costly to do they really have the budget to do so and here you can hear the noises or sound from the children from the adjacent school and there will be the school building already and right in front this will be Prince Scott Hospital or Medical Center okay and the LRT station will be somewhere around that direction and it's really nice to still have children sound foliage, breezy and clear clouds located in CBD itself. Very very rare, very very nice. Then for the car park, you have cement screening and this will be the ramp design. Every floor there will be 6A, 6B, 7A, 7B, 8A, 8B. Then you have epoxy paints for pedestrians. And because it's a different level thing, the lobby will be located at the lower floor. So if you park this location, you will need to go down into the lobby itself. But one thing I like, in order to reduce the claustrophobic effect, they place windows like this and they have transparent doors. For security reasons, it's also excellent. Cool. So coming up the lift, this will be the floor plate for the unit. And per floor, there's only 10 units. This unit 9 stands out 
very nicely as the individual plot away from all this right and there will be six sleeves together so mainly it's divided into three servicing the low zone three servicing the high zone so that's really cool and when you come out from the leaf they will be separated into two parts so per side is four and five on each then when you walk around the corridors there will be voids around so these hatches are actually voids and let's check it out the leaf lobby seems pretty bright because of this humongous opening so they use this kind of window design that allows ventilation so when it's raining they just close it right and the width of the leaf lobby is 2.3 meters and 3 meters in height so there will be a fire door but it just kept open for now this will be a perfect example of a unit facing the leaf lobby Every time if your unit is open while I'm waiting for the leaf, I get absolute view of whatever that's going on within the unit itself. So please bear in mind when you pick units. Then coming on to the common corridor, the width of the corridor is 1.3 meters and you have a drain attached to the side where the voids are so it means that water might splash through. On the side, this will be the refuse room. Let's check it out. Okay, it's a long one but the height is very nice and it comes with the recycled beans but just that I wish there's a ramp to ease the movement of the beans and due to its restriction of space as this is in a place where the land is very expensive right the only way that the developer express spaciousness will be to use height instead of area okay this will be the unit that we're going to check out today there will be a foyer here before the unit but before that this will be the entire scenario if you were to stay within the cbd so after a step from the corridor this will be a 1.3 meter foyer going through this the clearance will be around one meter the unit because this is furnished by the makeover guys it comes with the complimentary smart lock lah. so it's way more convenient during construction during operations of the unit but we'll talk about that later and today the unit they're going to check out will be type b it's a two plus one bedroom so when you come in from the entrance there will be a study room located at the side and once you go further in there will be the kitchen dining and straight away you're living along with the balcony and when you move in towards the corridor there will be one bedroom here then you have the principal bedroom at the end along with the bathroom then you have a shared bathroom here it's a rather direct layout coming right into the unit itself you will have this stone texture kind of tiles i'm not too sure whether it's stone or ceramic but it feels like stone but anyway when you go in this will be the first room it's a study room and this is where we need to also know when there's no door within the show unit, it's for a reason like this. <laughs> and the width of this room is 2.28 by 2.2 around. So you can just squeeze in a queen size bed and that's about it. You barely have any circulation space left. But luckily there's still a window of a decent size here. And that connects to the internal void. So it's going to be rather dark and even if you open up, there will be privacy issues of people using the corridor and the weird thing is that you have a DV box in this bedroom yeah this is where I then wonder coming out from the room you think that it's too small but it's only too small if you were to squeeze in a queen size bed and that's for investment reasons a 2 plus 1 is as good as a 3 bedroom so for a person who is really thinking about having a full fledged 3 bedroom where all bedrooms are fabulous versus a 2 plus 1 like this. This will definitely fetch higher than a normal 2 bedroom unit because the plus 1 can be a storeroom, can be a workspace, can also be a small baby's room. So what would be the better strategy is I will leave it empty first until I get a tenant in that confirms he wants to host a person or he wants to make it into a workstation. Only I will fill it up with the right furniture because ultimately it's the furniture that makes the function of the space. If not, after you squeeze in the bit like this right immediately you feel like hey this space very small actually it's not then coming in you will have your dining and your living already very well lit 
And then coming in, this will be the dry kitchen spot and it's going to be very challenging if you have a habit of Asian cooking like the whole space is going to smell like you're cooking and I think this is actually furnished by the developer you have an L shaped kitchen here and I must say for this scale right it's actually rather generous so the length from this end to the wall will be 2 meters long and you have your basin bottom and top cabinet along with an oven then you will have the cooker here by Electrolux the hood and hob is actually provided then you have a backsplash blue color I don't know what blue is this now. but how I just wish that this is actually round edge so it will be way easier to clean but this treatment here is nice and the basin is actually rather deep then this will be the fridge area a single door fridge and this will be next to the dining so if you were to live in a unit like this right it's really gonna be a very close relationship one because when you cook People will eat, then a person will chill and watch TV together all at the same area. So this is going to be a very active area at all times. Wall to wall here is around 3.1, ceiling height is around 3 and the living is located next to the balcony. And coming out to the balcony, this is a 1 meter width balcony and here will be what you get around city centre living. You have your tile floorings and you have your spray paints on your wall Steel and glass handrail to maximize the view And this is okay I think Because this is way better compared to those units that face directly to another apartment So you still have an opening here And this is where you can see a lot of office building I think there's a NASA building Then you have the Felda building around You can see TRX already So this will be the new Conley building that we reviewed before It means that but opposite this piece of land will be the upcoming Conley station and the weirdest thing is you have low density building in the middle of all these high rises and walking around this direction then you will have the open car park connecting to KLCC already so it's rather convenient and that's the main attractive point why would somebody live here lah. so imagine if you were to work within Jalan Tun Razak itself this is very convenient and it's going to be a debate. A lot of people might think that you can just stay slightly further away but your commuting time versus the rent. This is the main reason why a unit like this is going to cost 4000 a month. Is it exorbitant? It's entirely relative to the intent of living here. Whether is it very close to action or you're going to run this as an Airbnb short-term stay arrangement. Again, because this location is really, really strategic. Upcoming MRT station, very close to KLCC, very close to Pavilion, very close to TRX. And these can still enjoy somewhat space in between buildings. And if you get the right view, I don't know which end has the right view, you get actually some of the golf course view. Mm. However, the con side of living within this location will be the traffic congestion, of course, and that comes with the traffic noise as well. So once we close the window, you can immediately feel that it's absolutely isolated out. This window is so well built and it's closed not from the center, it's closed from the side. I guess that's easier for construction. But to my surprise, if you look at the neighboring tower, the occupancy rate is rather high. There's a lot of people putting out their clothes outside of the balcony, but I just don't think they are locals. Lah. Don't know. But anyway, as you mentioned, the rental for this unit itself is 4000 a month. And for this free whole project, if you go into Properties Guru portal, it's around 950 to 1.05 million, around that range. I guess it varies in accordance to the height. But I'm just so glad to see the liveliness around this location in comparison when we visit the adjacent block during the lockdown period and then everybody was still in mass, right? You can feel the street was really quiet. But now if you look into Jalan Tun Raza, right? Uh, next, going into the corridor, the width of the corridor is 1 meters, and there's no drop in the ceiling itself. So, this is very nice. Like, although the utilities are here, I don't see any drops to cater space for the pipings at all. Wow! This will be the shared bathroom, and this feels really luxurious. Full height wall tiles, you have two mirrors, and with the black frames it adds class to the whole thing then a full size mirror but the problem with this is i wish it could be somewhat backlit 
then it will be even closer to a hotel specification. Anyway, you have American Standard for basin and WC. You have this top and it comes with the vanity cabinet as well. So that's nice. It also comes with this aluminium frame with the shower screen, shower. Then going in, this will be the first bedroom. Ah, I see what they did here, but okay, first of all, you have a full opening on the facade itself. That's nice. As discussed just now, my strategy was right, which is to leave one of the room empty and allow some allowance for changes made by the tenant itself so if i want to work here where it's connected to the open area so it will be way better actually and this will be a window that you can open but there's no mechanism to prevent it from opening all the way so this is actually not safe for children yeah when you got children right it's, you get kind of get very paranoid with things but anyway the width of the room is 2.4 it's still okay in terms of size and this will be the cabinet then they are actually providing i think it's engineered timber very nice then last of all this will be the principal bedroom Wow, I totally didn't expect this kind of space to be within the principal bedroom. Looking at the two smaller bedrooms, the width from wall to wall is 2.6 meters, but the length is the whole floor bed together. Where you can put in a queen size bed, your wardrobe, and that will be the principal bathroom. And so far, I really enjoy their window treatments where they maximize everything of the facade side to maximize ventilation and daylighting into the space itself. After you put in a queen size bed, bedside tables, you still have abundance of space for circulation. Then you can have the cabinets on this side, walking into the principal bathroom. And on first impression, how come no door because every compartment has their own so this is the shower door and that will be the WC side and I kind of like this treatment as it opens up the space just they are not too sure about the moist level within the room so the humidity level is going to be pretty high anyway you have this counter top of two meters very nice and you have a basin by American standard the tap is actually by Grohe this full size mirror nice i absolutely love it then you have a washer dryer here and this is going to be a place where you do your laundry and i like that i left this empty so you can still put in things and it's actually easier for cleaning just in case when there are leakages also you won't damage the cabinets very thoughtful and looking at the tiles they go all the way up and even cover this portion easily people could just shortcut and not finish it right they did all the way this is the shower details you have your rain shower wc also american standard and is closer to the window you have frosted treatments for the partitions that's nice i absolutely didn't expect such a space to be within KLCD Center itself. Yeah, nice. So now we are at the facilities deck and there's uh, like one third of the floor base actually swimming pool and you have the infinity edge, you will have glass handrails to maximize the view and again this will be the benefit of this project itself because of the adjacent land that are still kept in a very low density format. I don't know why lah, because like based on usage, you really are wasting land but that's the charm of the buildings around this street where in the midst of high rises, you can still enjoy foliage and open air and KLCC again, Perilin, again TRX is really within reach like that only but that does not take away the overlooking issues among projects as you can see like you have people living within their unit itself you have laundries hanging outside and there's always possibilities that these will be converted into another high rise you can still see a lot of pockets of empty lands around the LCD center so on that side will be the swimming pool facing the open areas and here you have a pretty small gym on this side then you have an open lawn here with a pavilion there here as well and this is where you can really feel 
the overwhelming <laughs> privacy issue from the neighboring lots. But something to highlight, this will be the CBD living lifestyle actually like you will have a lot of neighboring buildings next to each other but this is a pure residence so you don't have the shop lots within walking distance you don't really get to walk to a cafe technically you can but it's a rather lengthy process of getting to a nearby grocer or whatsoever so it's still not as convenient as I hope CBD living would be but this is a very different setting right? Like on one side right this will be the opening like check it out when you have units of this side right that will be the view that you get which is that open greenery of golf course but then on the other side then you have all your neighbors saying hi to you all the time in settings of such the floor premiums makes way more sense because just by two levels apart right it gives you a very different perspective anyway this will be the yoga open deck i think which is located next to the children's playground okay lah some empty space for privacy when you need it it's fine and now we are in the gym next to the pool in between the lawn okay and you have a full-size mirror here it's a very cozy one as mentioned the cardio side will face the lawn then you have some open areas in the center timber flooring Machines by Life Fitness and barbell here, free weights. Pretty decent, pretty solid. Mm. Then something right in the center here, they call it the living room. This will be the living space if you have a gathering among families. Lah. So uh, that's a living corner. There's a settee arrangement to a big TV screen. Then this will be your communal dining as well where you can have your own chef to host party here. A foosball. So they kind of combine the games room, library, communal dining and etc. all together in one. A pretty nice space. Then it's in between the swimming pool. It's in between the children's play area. And I really appreciate the height that they provide for the facility stack. It promotes ventilation but you don't really feel win I think because of the neighboring buildings around <laughs> So within a 5 to 10 minutes walk, you will walk through some local roadside stalls then you will come to this Conley station already and this is within the same road connected to Prince Scott Medical Center as well and you have Plaza Conley also so everything here is going to be really really close to each other already at the same place you can see a lot of office towers and just imagine if you are staying within this location you can almost walk to your office very very cool and that saves a lot of traveling time that gives you a lot of peace of mind just that within proximity there's no commercial area of course you can still walk to Pavilion you can walk to KLCC also but that takes a rather long walking distance it's not like a five minutes kind of thing and i can only imagine when this station is in full operation right? i'm not too sure whether can this local road sustains its traffic or not hmm. interesting to see and i guess that's all for this episode it's now time for sean's take three on three and the first thing of course will be the ultra premium location of being within city center itself not only it's city center right it's in between a few premium addresses klcc pavilion and trx so for pavilion and klcc it's still somewhat walking distance if you want to but for trx definitely you will need to drive and that explains the high rental and the high demand of space around this location so if you think about it when you buy i think it's around eight nine hundred thousand and now you can actually fetch around four thousand for a fully furnished unit not bad right and just when you think within cbd itself it's going to be a very cool concrete living lifestyle right not really because right opposite you have eaton house school then walking distance you have the brand new conley mrt station you have a lot of offices around and hopefully when this mrt is up it becomes with a commercial center as well so within walking distance now you get to fulfill all your needs and that's point number two just when you thought you're living within an address that's surrounded by high-rise buildings right this is not 
you still get to enjoy empty space, open air, huge trees while living within CBD itself because of its setting that is in between the fringe of the open area and Jalan Tun Raza side. So when you drive around Jalan Tun Raza, on one side you have absolutely no buildings, on one side you have all the high rises and this is at the fringe. So you kind of get the best of both worlds lah. but that's provided you are facing the right orientation. Of course, that comes with a premium law. And the last thing I like will be the density and its direction of design. So when you come to this kind of format, it's a very boutique. It's not as loud, it's not as commercialized. So when you drive in, immediately you have a very different treatment. You have a small water feature at the side to actually ease yourself into the building. Then you have a huge green wall. And because of its site being so narrow and small, right? The only way they can express spaciousness is using the height. So once you come into the lobby, it's high, the doors are amazing. And in the lift lobby itself, the extra openings, right, they open up to the very top. That includes the toilet design, that includes the balcony design, that includes to all windows within rooms. I like it. And its low density gives it a very homey feeling to kind of isolate ourselves from the very busy city-like living. One floor you have 10 units and it's like 300 over units only in today's context, right? That's like luxury level already. And more about the design language, the level of finishing is very very thoughtful. It's those kind of luxury segment one, like you have a lot of stone, a lot of aluminium framing, a lot of bronze trimming here and there. Almost like a hotel, almost like a hotel, which is nice. Then for the three things that I don't like, number one will be the surrounding buildings that is just so close to each other. So you have Stoner Tree next to you, you have Aria next to you. It's just very, very close and to certain areas or certain units, right, within the building itself, you actually feel exposed. Like when you just hang out around, you have buildings all around you. Imagine at night, everyone is at home and looking at you. Then the level of privacy, not as comfortable. And because of that as well, the entrance is also shared between three buildings. Such a narrow entrance, a branch off from Jalan Tu Raza, right? You need to share that with three different buildings. And you know lah, Malaysians all park roadside one, right? Yeah. And that's within the micro level setting. Within the macro one, right, you just look around. All are pretty similar in terms of design language, pricing, and etc. All share the same amenities all share the same selling points so it's going to be a very high level of competition just because there are so many similar projects around the address of course there are some new some old some upcoming some closer to the mrt some closer to the pavilion some closer to the garden side of things my next concern will be the amount of uncertainty around the address because there are just a lot of empty land still just when we think that oh, KL is fully developed not really just that it's fully owned privately not by the government not by the land authorities any more. That's why like the amount of empty lands around KL is very little but it's all privately owned. So you won't know anytime next to you will be a brand new apartment, next to you will be a brand new office tower. And look at the development currently when this MRT is up right, I think the landscape around here is going to change. Just when we came here during MCO, it's changed already. So many new buildings are coming up and being completed but the amount of architecture level here is very high. Like. I love it but just that it's also competition to each other and just when you thought that the view is going to be like that it's not okay so that's one of the not so good side and last of all will be the congestion and the noise and the hustle and bustle that comes with living in the city lo. so as you are located right next to Jalan Tun Razak right you will need to really depend on local roads like this to get around the address because once you go through that well, it's going, never going to end and despite whatever development whatever infrastructure improvement they do to Jalan Tun Razak right, it's still so many people eh? right I guess it's a good thing if you think about real estate right but that's when the entrance of the hidden junction away from the main road I guess that's a good move to stay away from the main access so you still really get to enjoy some level of privacy but I guess that's all for this project and do I like this project? surprisingly I think it's rather suitable for long term stay especially for expat 
even with a kid, right, to raise their family here within CBD itself. Because a lot of people do not know, during weekends, right, the city is very, very quiet and peaceful. And if you look into the setting like this, where you have all greeneries, landscape, the convenience of shopping malls, the pedestrian experience is actually very, very pleasant. I guess a lot of locals don't really live in KL city center anymore because that's why the whole concept of traffic jam every single day of people staying away from city trying to move in then after office hours they try to move out again hmm very very interesting and i'm very happy to see the amount of people i'm seeing right now because we were here mco time this is a very good improvement i have not seen any malaysian yet walking around all are angmos or expats nice and i guess that's all for this episode if you really like this episode like it share and even subscribe for more information like this until next time this is shantan ciao